Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another exciting Vobie One Eye Kenobi show me with me, the one and only baldy bloke called Richard from Worthing. Yes, it's another Vobe show. Hello, how are you? Are you well? Are you doing good things? Are you ready for an exciting time? We have the lovely Julia with us down there in good old Lansing. Let's see if she's there and ready. Hello, lovely Julia. He says, whacking on his headphones. Hello, lovely Vobesters. Hello, Richard. Lovely Richard. How are you? All good, thank you. Survived another day. Survived another day. Another day closer to the restrictions being lifted and we can all escape and get out and go and hug one another. How many people will you hug on the first day when they say, it's free to go and hug people? There's only a small handful of people that I really, really desperately need to hug at the moment. Who, right. You know, over the, over the due course of time, there's quite a few people that I'd like to eventually nicely yes. and carefully cuddle. Ah, well, that's very good. And then how many of those, how many handshakes... Have you missed? Well, I suppose women don't just sort of handshake, but men, you know, I was thinking about this. How many times have I, would, would I have shooken somebody's hand? Have we now sort of done this elbow grease thing and thump Shooken. pumps and keep knee knockers and whatever it is? Big, no, not big knockers. Um, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, could be quite a lot of times that we should have been doing all of those things, but it will be lovely. It will, won't it? It'll be it, fantastic. It, all right, let me just put your neck back down. Oh, there you go. I say, steady on that, girl, steady on. Anyway, uh, we have a lovely audience out there waiting, ready to say hello to us. So, uh, lovely Julia, I wonder if it's possible that you might just glance your eyes uh, across, 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 across our lovely selection of audience and tell us who's out there. Gladly. We have the lovely Judith, the lovely Ernie Summer, the lovely Mark Donnie McLeod, the lovely Sean Ford, the lovely Kerry Baldwin, the lovely Rick M, the lovely Eastbourne couple, the lovely Bill Billabong O'Neill, the lovely Nigel Sadler, the lovely Colonel Cack. Did you did you lose your teeth this week? Yeah, I just put my teeth in now. Aha. The lovely Paul Cockerill, the lovely Station Master's Choice, the lovely Mark Burgess, the lovely Charles Nagel, the lovely, let's look for a new name, oh, Rasputin of Artington, the lovely Jonathan Rao, Row, Rao, Row, 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 you're Jonathan Rao, him down the street, sorry. The lovely Rami Boo too. Yay. The Ron Langley. Ron. The lovely Jeffrey Harrison. Yeah. The lovely Daniel Watkins, the lovely Alan Sandell, the lovely Jen Colley, the lovely Elaine Whitelock. The lovely new name, new name. Oh, Woody Jenny. The lovely G Ramps. The lovely Dave over yonder. The lovely Robin Jones. The lovely uh, Welsh wonder Jason Patrick. The lovely Mike Dixon. The lovely Kate Evans. The lovely Clive Waterfall. The lovely Linda Kane. The lovely Tracy Strickland. Stickland Mottram. The lovely Vincent Quill. Anyone else want to pop it? Oh, the lovely Julia M. The lovely Tracy Murphy. The lovely Ian Dance. Seeing if there's anyone else I miss. So many Anybody lovely else? people have come to join the us. Lovely sensible Paul. Ah, oh, the we lovely go. Andrew Norris. Is Andrew Norris now? I didn't see. Is him Andrew Norris? Well, uh, I haven't got a letter from him to say that he's going to be late, but he often is. You know, he's got things to do, art to yeah. uh, to whip up, and uh, whips to uh, polish. Um, no, I don't yeah. think he's here today at the moment so oh. far. Well, you never know. He may. Later. Yeah, he may turn. He may turn up. You know, uh, it'd be he lovely to, be to see him. Yep. Yeah. Somebody keep an eye out for all our lovelies. So, anyway, there we are. We have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the 5th of February 2021, just after 8 o'clock, we have, in the UK, of course, it might be a different time where you are, but we have, ladies and gentlemen, a full fun pack show, as ever. It's amazing. You know, I come to the show and I think, oh, my God, I hope we have a few videos. And over the last couple of days, you know, they've been popping in. I see the Wii transfer window opening up. And it's like transferring footballers. One has to pay £52,000 for each of these videos. I hope uh, the contributors get the money by the way, because I send it off. Um, I'm not quite sure where these uh, 52,000 pounds of mouldy old potatoes go, but I do send them off. Anyway, um, we have some uh, videos from uh, the lovely Nikki. We have Bernie. We have Roy Edwards, uh, Edward M. We have Colonel Craig Ratty, uh, David Sedgwick and uh, Mike Stevens. Wow, loads of videos today. Loads oh, of videos. Hello, Mike Stevens. Uh, so that's really nice. And also we have some art from Robin Jones, from Woody Jenny and Lance, which is Fantastic. grand. And we have a poem uh, by Pete Telling. Now, I need to ask you, did you get the poem? Have you got the poem there? 
Did you mail me the poem? Did I mail you the poem? No, I didn't. That's a silly thing from me. I'll uh, see if I can, in the, in the uh, process of today's show... I could I... fill it up from Facebook, I'm sure. Oh, could you? Well, uh, d do let me know. If not, I will um, find it and, and email it to you live. This is the, the way we rock on this show. This is one of those shows that you've probably seen on other channels, completely unpolished and improvised and made up as we go along. Unlike mainstream media, which is rehearsed to death. Because um, uh, we don't understand what rehearsing means, do we? Rehearsal? What, 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 I'm it? sorry, what, what is that? What? <laughs> what is that? We, uh, up until five minutes ago, didn't know whether Julia was going to be on the show because the camera went... <laughs> technology. <laughs> technology, yeah. eh? uh, Everyone loves a bit of good technology. And we have plenty of that in this show. Um, so we do have a lot of videos to get through, of course, which is fantastic. And thank you very much for sending them in. Um, let's just see if there's uh, any exciting mentions out there before we... If anyone's got anything desperate they want to get off, we will try and get the phone calls on because we've been laxing in that over the last uh, few shows because we've... Um, well, as more people have come and found and discovered the uh, Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi, um, we, we just have more videos than... Uh, things and in, and it would be good it would be good also one of the things that you and i were discussing the other day is having a guest a co-guest a third a third contributor live you know yes. in other words we will squish these two images of uh, no wait a minute you're that side julia there over further and me further that way and we would stick somebody else in so if anybody fancies um being a a guest throughout the show who we would just sort of talk about the videos and then have a chinwag about life, the universe and everything and all of that, rather than lots of people just popping in as and when and not knowing. It's nice to sort of have something a little bit more um, planned, even if it is, oh, I'll do it for you, which will be great because then we can have just a third voice. But that would be it. We, I don't want to put tons of people in. No. So we had that conversation, and you thought it was a great idea, if I remember rightly, Julia? I did, I did. Yeah, that, that conversation started up because there was somebody, um, when was it, was it Friday, that, um, that, that offered up her services. Still Friday. Someone we haven't seen for a while. Ah, yeah. Well, there you go. Um, I can't remember who that somebody is, but... Uh... The Champs. Oh, yes, that's right, The Champs. I wonder if The Champs is out there. Uh, she may not have written anything, but she may be oh, watching. Not, cause she's been a busy lady. She has been. She's a teacher, isn't she, the yes, champs? So she's been in lots of demand for online classes, so bless her. She's been very busy. Yeah, and uh, and so therefore she's not been able to contribute in, in any form, but it would be great actually to have the champs on the show and or somebody else as well. So I think we should kick off um, uh, with a video, which would be great, um, and see how we go. Um, lots of uh, comments going on. Evening, Vobish people, says Michael White. Hello to you, if you've just popped in. Sean Ford, he says he's up for it. And Sean, was uh, when, uh, when, we, when we spoke to him on the phone and he rang in, do you remember, was it this week or last week sometime? Anyway, after he'd sent in that marvellous video, he sounded a very um, well-spoken young fella, didn't he? Yes, I think it was Monday show, wasn't it? Yeah, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't remember what happened this afternoon, let alone whatever. <laughs> I noticed uh, that the very lovely Eastbourne couple had uh, mentioned earlier that they had watched the new Boots video. Yes, I'm sure a um, fair few people have. Yes, no, but they just happened to mention it, so that was very nice okay. of them. Thank you very much. Yes, um, love that one. So very that fun. Was, that was very good. Um, what else was I going to say? I can't think of anything else. Let's uh, let's launch off with the first of our videos and uh, see how we do. There's somebody saying Andrew. Andrew. Oh, there he is. Look, I told you to be here. Andrew Norris. Can't keep a good man down. He Thank is you. there. Uh, and, um, and a few more. Uh, few and a few more, more has, have oh. arrived. If you didn't miss the, if you didn't get, uh, get on the roll call, then uh, I'm sorry, you didn't get the, uh, the sweeties because it's end of the week. We were giving out sweeties if you, everybody turned up on time. Uh, those that didn't turn up on time obviously have to buy everybody else now a nice cake nice iced cake 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 oh, I love cake that would be good that it would be great actually as soon as the restrictions are done you'll be able to come back into the studio and yeah. uh, you know you'll be able to sort of torment me with bubbles again <laughs> yes uh oh oh Here i've got no bubble liquid Dang. Uh, no, but I think that I might still have in the one over here, but I don't want to yeah, play with should, it. There should be a little bit left in the uh, in the bottle there. Yeah. 
And I don't want to play with it because you know what I'm like with uh, mechanical things. It'll probably break. <laughs> no, my luck. Right, let's uh, let's go into the video box and see who's on our first lineup. Ooh. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the video box and everything's all working. I just have to do one uh, little important thing first of all. Eric, Eric, can you start up the projector, please? Right, oh, sir. I've started up the projector now, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a bit of everything, please. Shush. <laughs> I fed him only last week. Um, <laughs> you, you don't want a little a little chap who's um, <clears throat> overfed, otherwise he, you know, his fingers can't lace up the projector properly. So he's down there. He's got it all ready, uh, which is fantastic. Love the slow motion bit, says Sean Ford. Oh, in the... Uh, yeah, if only I could have used the bionic man. Ba -ba -bum, da -da -da -da. Where does it bionic it, mate? That's the chariots of fire, isn't it? That, oh, that's, yeah. that's what I was going to sing too. I was thinking. Uh, oh, it didn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. That's just so, so nice, isn't she? Um, right. So it's uh, Newt Cassiglass is uh, first up on the list tonight with a haunted walk, Ooh. a local walk to where she is in Norfolk. Let's see if she gets spooked. Today I've come a local walk. It's rather cold because it blows the cobwebs off. And my heart here is going ten to the, the dozen. Uh, I've just turned round to speak to my husband um, about taking a photograph and I saw a woman's figure, the outline. Well, it wasn't even an outline, it was the whole figure uh, in like a mist um, of a woman about five foot four. And she just went from the ivy that you can see in the right hand side of my screen down here down the banking so I'm, you can probably hear by my voice i'm quite quite shocked i'm not frightened but seeing that when you're you're out for a walk i must do some uh, more investigation as to to why she should be here near a train track so further to the experience of the, the spooky happening just then. My husband's just said well, we are near a lot of water and obviously electricity connected to the railway track so each are a conductor of uh, energy or spiritual activity as well so we could have uh, hit, upon the, hit upon the point of uh, reasoning there.
Okay, there we go. How about that? A ghost on yeah. the line. A possible suicide, apparently, or maybe in 1800, according to uh, Nuka's um, chat just uh, down there. What did you make of that, uh, Julia? Well, I thought the scenery was lovely. Scenery was you. fantastic, wasn't it? It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, now, go on. sorry, go on. And the spooky going, yeah, get a bob. The spooky goings on was quite eerie, wasn't it? But um, <clears throat> yeah, lovely video. Thanks for that, Nikki. Um, now, I noticed there was a few comments saying that uh, Nikki was quiet um, in that, and a few people were saying that, and then other people were saying it was loud. So let me just explain. Um, the music level was very loud compared to the voice level, and I'm going to do a video on my video tips on how to match both um, the audio that you record on location with the music that you might put on afterwards. Because what I do here in the studio when I send out the video is I have to watch the meters. We've got UV meters, which measure the sound. And if I had... Because I don't want to be mixing the sound of the of the videos live, because that's not my job. You know, you you create your own videos and your sound systems and stuff, and then I send it in and I see what the optimum level is and I try and do that. But if, like, music comes in very, very loud, I will lower the overall thing so the music isn't um, coming out too loud or too distorted. But if your voice level then is much lower than that, um, then that will come out even quieter. So... Um, that's not a criticism at all. It's not a criticism. It's just, it's, it's very difficult. So towards the, when I saw people going, oh, it's quiet, I was looking at my meters here. So when you were talking, um, Nikki, I was then boosting that back up again, but I knew that there was another bit of music because I'd listened, I'd seen the video beforehand and I knew I had to quickly turn the volume down. Otherwise it would suddenly bl blare out too loud. That, that was funny though, because um, of course, like a lot of people, I think I turned my volume up so I oh, could right. hear hear a bit better yeah and uh, and then i forgot i turned it up and then the music come on <laughs> <laughs> exactly so it is it is very uh different it i mean you know it is incumbent on the video producer to make the levels right but i appreciate most of these are done by amateurs of course and so it's a bit of a problem so it just gave me an thing. it gave me the idea ah this is something to do for another video tip to help everybody um to improve their videos because that's what you don't want the audience to do is to go, oh, can't hear it, turn it all up. Then when the music comes, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, um, it's, but it's not a criticism at all. Um, it's just, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, but I found that interesting that uh, uh, Nikki said that uh, it, the sound should be all right because I've got a phone with four speakers on it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, how do you... It's what, not mean for the playback. Yeah, but that's well. It's not microphones, so it's not recording uh, from oh. four microphones. So I couldn't understand why you would have a, f why you need four speakers on a phone that's presumably only that big, <laughs> because how how are you hearing it anyway? I just thought that was um, fascinating. Technology now, you know, <laughs> technology. Uh, up until recently, uh, I mean, I was using a phone. I only had one speaker, and um, the quality was a bit crap, but. Some of these phones, I don't know if you've noticed, some of these phones now, the footage is even better than DSLRs and uh, mirrorless cameras. It's, uh, it's crazy. So you don't know what to buy. What do you buy? A phone that's the camera is so brilliant you don't need all these bigger things. Um, it's all quite fun. Any interesting comments out there, lovely Julia? Um, <clears throat> yes, Andrew, you often get a lot of videos with a lot of wind noise, rather. Um, not sure what that was about. Uh, Richard, you are quiet tonight. I have the volume up 98% on the PC. And the Beery Boater says it's a VU meter, Richard, volume unit, not rather than a UV meter. Um, I often make that um, get the... I think that's it's, just slip the tongue. Who, who said that? That was uh, Beery Boater. Yeah. OK. Well, you knew what I mean, you swine. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes, the other way just around. Just slip of the tongue. Yes, it's a slip of the tongue. Uh, they are um, two initials that uh, I got the wrong way around, but I will bear that in mind. Nootka says it's a super duper phone. One TB of storage two. One that what? Sorry. One terabyte of storage two. Oh, fantastic! Absolutely. Well, um, 
It depends how loud you've recorded the audio. That's the thing on your when you're out and about. Um, which the, the place that you would mix that is in the edit. When when you go to edit it, Nicky, you would try and match the music level or bring the voice level up to match the music or bring the music level to match the voice on your VU meter. Make sure I get that the right way around. So, <laughs> so that it's it's sort of everything is nice and even. You see, you can use compressors, you can normalise it. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but if you just haven't got all that stuff and you're not confident, you just make sure that nothing goes into the red and try and keep it around about between 12 and 6 dB on the little scale where the VU meter has the little green and red and yellow lights. I mean, it so depends on, on your system. It's very hard to sort of... You know, and, and often what I've just said there might be gobbledygook to a lot of people. That's the problem because it's a, it's a technical thing. Yep. Uh, Robert Croser says, uh, I won't send any more videos in then. Um, oh, to, to Linda because oh. uh, she can't watch videos like that with lots of wind noise. Yeah, that wind noise is uh, is is very much a no no. It, it, I mean, it's difficult because it's so hard that I mean, I think the thing, and I don't want to get technical on tonight's show because it should be a fun show. But the, here's a secret that people, very few people, pre, really understand. Videos you think of as a primarily visual format, which it is, but concentrate more on the sound than the picture. And your video will be better because any video with crap sound makes the whole video look good, makes the visuals look rubbish. But your videos, visuals might be rubbish, but if the sound is good, people will still sit through it. It's a funny thing, but if you don't have good sound um, or reasonable sound, so in other words, if you've got horrible wind noise on it, nobody just, you just, it just makes it uncomfortable. And that's no disrespect because it's so easy to change that, to get rid of the wind noise. Speaking um, of um, weather noise, can you hear the rain on my roof? Oh, is that what it is? I was thinking it was outside here because I'm hearing it through these. This yeah. is very deceptive. Sorry about that. I'll mute myself as, as much as I can. No, no. Is it is it wind? No, that's rain. That's on the rain. Roof. Oh, wow. There we are. So I, have, I don't know if I've got it yet because uh, I'm in a you know more solid house with bricks and mortar i'm not in an old shack <laughs> that uh, poor old julia lives in it's a shame this, this comment made me sh made me chuckle yeah sean Paul said that uh says i might take a strolling musical minstrel with me on my next discovery walk he can softly strum his lute behind me <laughs> i think that would be perfect i would love to see that i would love to see somebody doing their pieces to camera and, and uh, you know someone's wheeling a piano behind them and, and, <laughs> and doing the accompaniment live that would be hilarious um, so yeah, uh, which is good. Um, then you do very well, Nikki, on such a tiny device with limited features, says Nigel Sadler. Yeah, no, please don't take it as a criticism. I'm just, I'm just trying to point out that these are problems that we all have. I have them. I have. I don't always get the, uh, the audio right, and and I'll get a comment from uh, lovely uh, Andrew Norris who'll go, I like that video, but I thought the music was a bit loud. <laughs> And it's like you, you know, you think you've got it right. And then somebody listening on a different machine, the machine will, you know, sometimes these phones sort of compress the volume and bring up the, the subtle sounds louder than you want. So often you can't win. You can't win. But, you, you know, it takes it takes a bit of time. Anyway, yeah. that was uh, that was that. I didn't want to go long on it, but, but because people were coming until people will now know. Um, good stuff. Should we have a look at uh, some art? Yes, I think that'd be lovely. I think that will be great. Let's go into the art gallery. Uh, we do that by this. And uh, in the art gallery today, thanks very much to uh, uh, Andrew Norris for that lovely bit of music. Um, which was sensational. This is from uh, Robin Jones, who has sent in this, and he says, Good day, Richard. I have attached two photos I took a few years ago, which the railway enthusiasts on your channel may like. They were taken at Sheffield Park Station. Kindest regards, Robin Jones. And Sheffield Park Station is, uh, as I remember it, is part of the Bluebell Railway. 
So let's have a little look at this. These are rather lovely, and this is a nice moody sort of uh, photo in, um, what do you call that, that um, old-fashioned colouring? Um, the name has just come straight out of my head, as ever, when I'm broadcasting in what the, the old Victorians used to do. Sepia. There we are. It's, it's seeped back in again. Henry's Adventures. There we are. Nigel Sadler's in there with sepia. They're, they're all saying it. It's great, actually. Sometimes losing your me memory is quite handy because... Um, it elicits response. <laughs> sepia, sepia, you idiot. <laughs> sepia. Uh, isn't that lovely, Julia? It is. The rain <laughs> is really loud, by the way. <laughs> it is really loud, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, let's have a look at the other one. Here it is. Um, now, oh, it's quite down. I absolutely love Bluebell Railway, right by the way. Bluebell herself is my favourite. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a lovely... Um, which which uh, engine is this? Well, I wonder if the train buffs can um, identify it. Uh, as uh, Andrew Norris said, the previous one I think he's referring to looks like a still from the film Brief Encounter, um, which was lovely. Is that the one with Trevor Howard in Brief Encounter? Um, Henry's Adventure says an A Black 5. Uh, so I don't really know what that means, but it's a lovely-looking engine, um, well done to Robin. Pleasing both are, says uh, Woody Jenny. Ooh, you, you're in a caravan. <laughs> She's in a gypsy caravan, aren't you, Julia? That would be lovely, but no, nothing that interesting. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I must remember to turn that bit off uh, when I come out of the... Uh, of the thing there we go so thank you very much robin that they were lovely um we do have train buffs out there so if anybody fancies uh, sending in some pictures and don't tell us what the engine is and see if the train buffs can guess it i think that's great you know because uh, i wouldn't be able to say yes or no there we are station master's choice straight in black five lms design i do believe and it, 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 with p-class bluebell in the background oh yes did you not I hang on? You couldn't see the back. Yeah. <laughs> People are not should... paying attention. Uh... Oh, yeah, there she is. Oh, my gosh. How <laughs> stupid am I? <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. Uh, how lovely is that? Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much. There we go. Um, that is um, some phot photography art. We have some more art to come to um, a little bit later, but I think we will go to our next video and then we will have a poem. Did you find the poem, lovely Julia? I did. You did? Oh, look at that. We'll have poem accompanied by a very atmospheric Hi. rain. <laughs> Unfortunately, your sound doesn't get piped through my desk. It goes straight out. And as of that, I can't give you a little bit of the lovely reverb, which would be lovely over a bit of... Oh, hello. She's fiddling with uh, more technology there, Julia. She can't hear us now. She, Can you hear us? Um, I'm hoping that this might be working better. Oh, right, OK. Well, I tell you what, whilst you fiddle with that, we'll go and have a look at another video. Um, and this one is from Bernie. Um, so the station master's choice. Let's go into the video box and see what's there. And uh, just looking for it, there it is, Bernie. And he's in Wartling. Ever, ever wanted to know where Wartling is? Bernie will tell us. Well, here we are in Wartling. The traditional telephone box, although... <laughs> does it have a telephone in it? Yes, it does. So you can still make a telephone call. Post box here. King George the Seventh. Edward the Seventh. We have another George the Seventh, have we? That must be Edward the Seventh. That's been here for quite a while in that case. Wow. Walking this way. Don't you walk this way. <laughs> People will look at you funny. Now this is one of the one of the nicer churches you'll find in the marshes. At one time probably would have 
would have had parishioners come from quite a wide area. Oh, did you just spot them? You might have. I'm just looking at the bunny rabbit. Did you see that? There he goes. Whee! <laughs> I hope you managed to see that. They're doing some building work here, but doesn't it look nice as the sun comes across the, the grass there? I won't go in out of reverence. It's barely gone six o'clock in the morning. So, anyway, St Mary Magdalene, the parish church of Watling. Look at this lovely, lovely tree. That's been here a few years, hasn't it? My word. That's been here a few years. Look at that nice... <clears throat> I should imagine now that is a U. It's always been very nicely shaped. Though I don't think I'd want to be on top of the ladder cutting the top of that. And by the old school farmhouse there. Now, I'm fairly sure that the Normans would have worked their way around here. Or this particular group that I was talking about because there probably would have been a settlement here in Saxon times, being on the top of a hill. And we had to go somewhere. And we needed to get back down in order to cross Waller's Haven. And I think this is where they'd have got caught. Oh, hear those birds? They don't like me being around, do they? This is where they have gone, down the horse walk, and that is where I am going to go now. Look at that lovely buddleia there, look. It's a beautiful scent. And another one of the old houses in the village. There we go. That is the lovely Bernie in Watling. And uh, how lovely is that? I missed the bunny, I have to say, but I was. it was interesting looking at the U. I think that must be an Irish U. Um, ah, the lovely Julia's there with her headset on, looking uh, very like a um, a pilot ready to take off. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you all ready for takeoff, Julia? Yes, is that better? Can you hear the rain? I can still hear the rain. But uh, not as badly? But no, yeah, but you're much, when the rain stops, you're much clearer. Okay. Um, so that that's very nice. So yeah, that was a lovely. Thank you very much. That was a lovely walk around um, Watling. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is in relation to Eastbourne. Uh, should have looked on the map really. Um, but like all uh, failed presenters, I didn't. Um, <laughs> there you are. Um, but uh, looks very nice. And the uh, when he said. Um, that's George the Seventh. I thought, hang on a minute, have I missed it? I, I've got a book somewhere, History of England, Timeline and all of that. I, thought, I don't remember having George the Seventh. Didn't we get up to George the Fourth and then we sort of stopped? We're waiting for some George. Is there any Georges left in the in the line? What were the names of the um, Andrew and the other woman who he married, the one he married? What was her name? Well, there was Fergie. No, no, uh, not Andrew. I mean, um, who's the one that's uh, you've got Harry and... Larry, no. Harry, Harry and Meghan, but but Kate and William have. William, little that was it. William and Kate. What's their they son? Have... Pardon? <clears throat> their eldest is George. I'm muted. Sorry. Oh, there we are. So he could be George the Fifth, couldn't he? Yeah. He could. Would he get in? William would. Would you've got Charles, and then he's not going to be around for long, and then uh, William, and then potentially George. Is it he? He would be in line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's he in is, line. He is in, what is he, the third in line, presumably. Yeah. yeah. And uh, right. let's hope nothing ever happens to William. Um, we hope that nothing, because we don't want Harry in there, do we? I mean, he's made a right... He, he can't now. 
can he not? Because they've defected, haven't they? Effectively. Yeah. It's a bit Pretty like sure. um, Edward and Mrs. Simpson, Harry and Meghan Markle. Yeah, there, there is a lot of similarities there. Um, a lot, actually. We have had a George. We have had a George the Fifth. Yeah, what I meant was that George the Sixth. <laughs> You're just testing them. Yeah, they see George, but they, they they came and went really quickly at the beginning of the century, didn't they? After Victoria, um, they were sort of like not. I mean, I know actually, a lot of them didn't. You know, like Anne. What was the one Anne of ten nine days? Was it Anne? What was the one who had nine days? You see, I want to do this timeline thing of history because there's lots of history that I'm a bit fuzzy on now, and I want mm. to go back through history and go. Who was the one who had nine days? I can't remember. I, I mean, I'm better with the uh, kings and queens of England than I was back at school, but I, I'm still not that good at it. Yeah, well, this is it. King George, isn't it? Charles is going to be King George, isn't he? Says, what do you mean Charles is going to be King George? He'll be King Charles, surely. He'll be Charles III, won't he? We haven't had, don't tell me we've had a Charles III that I haven't noticed. Well, is his, is his official name not Charles? If Charles becomes king... He won't keep that name. Why? Yeah, That's a fascinating thing. Why no. will he not keep his name? Why will he suddenly have a new name? Can you imagine people... I mean, he's, he's, what, 90 himself, isn't he? Or 80 or something? I mean, the Queen's nearly 100, isn't she? Isn't the Queen... Yeah, she's getting on there, I'm sure. I mean, she, does the Queen send herself a telegram? I don't know. I've I wonder if they... that, My husband and I would like to wish Her Majesty, the Queen... Me, <laughs> a very happy hundredth birthday. Let's hope the restrictions have been removed so we can have a jolly good knees up. What? Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. I see. Oh. Apparently, he won't. He probably won't go for Charles due to what happened to the last Charles. Oh, what? But what? Because he was beheaded. Yeah. Wait, the first Charles? Like no, wait a minute. The first Charles was beheaded. No, the the, the last one, the previous one. What? Oh, the... oh, I don't know. What do you mean? What happened to the last Charles? The, um, he died. Charles II died, and then he left it to um, his brother, who was Catholic, although Charles II was, you know, sort of Catholic, but trying to pretend to be Protestant. He was like... He was sort of bisexual, really. He was swinging both ways, but as in by... by religion, by whatever you call it. Uh, buy one, get one free, I think he was. And, um, yeah, wasn't he? But he is Charles Philip Arthur George, full name, says Mother Nature. Oh, Charles Philip Arthur George. So what does he... Can he just pick any one of those he wants? <sighs> does he, I don't yeah. know. Is it, you know well, I, I think, I'm, <laughs> There's someone else who's agreeing with you. I'm, Charles I'm, I beheaded, Charles II closed Parliament and ruled on his own. Yes, that's right. Uh, Charles, he he was um, a more avant-garde, wasn't he, with his long ringlets and things, and things. Mm. And then um, his brother, oh, his brother was the second, um, not John, not uh, what was his brother called? His brother was because um, because he had uh, I do know his name, but I can't I can't bring it to life. Um, what was his sodding brother called? Um, I, got, I met him once at a reception and I was entertaining back in 1666, uh, trying to say, it's not a blooming virus. You know, when the Vogue show was on in, in 1666 going, oh, not the plague again, not the second time, God, pl please. I had this uh, little podcast thing um, next to a printing press and all my words were written down by the Braille people. Anyway... Um, uh, Titus Groan was a mate of mine. He used to do all the mechanics. Anyway, none of this uh, makes any sense to anybody else. But the point was, I was going to make his brother, because um, there was the bastard son of Charles II, was, what's his name, Scott, the Duke of Monmouth. And the Duke of Monmouth had the rebellion in 1685, uh, which happened down in Sedgemoor, uh, which I did a video about fairly recently. Uh, not recently, years ago. And um, he, they had the Battle of Sedgemoor and he ran away, deserted everybody, was found in a ditch, he came back and he squealed for his life and they beheaded him. But, and he was, uh, his mother was Jane, Jane Smith? Something like that. Uh, anyway, the point was, there was a rumour that actually, although everyone said he was the bastard son, there are some that thinks that he was the real son, the legitimate heir, that 
Charles II had married the Jane Smith, or whatever her name was, and that actually, and I have a sneaky feeling that that is true, and that they actually beheaded the heir to the throne. That's what I think. But uh, I have no idea whether it's true, of course, because people are, you know, so long in history, what do I know? James! James! That was it! James II! James II, that was his brother, because James I was the King of Scotland, who came after Elizabeth. Was it after Elizabeth? Hang on, you had Mary, and then Elizabeth, and um, Elizabeth, and then Mary and Elizabeth again, didn't you? And then there was a lot of sort of shuffling around of uh, whoever you wanted to be in the Tudor period, and then Elizabeth, and then... Um, and then Elizabeth hung on and hung on and hung on, and it's like, oh my God, when are you going to go? And who who's going to succeed you, Liz? Liz? Who? 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 I'm not saying. I'm not saying another word. I'm not saying another word. I'm going to. I'm just going to lie here and be pale. But you've been pale all your life. I know. I'm going to be paler, paler than pale. You're looking a bit rough. No, there's just that frilly thing around my neck. Uh, poor old Liz. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know. I live on the Monarch's Way, says Benita Holland. Oh, well, I may have knocked... I could have gone past your house and knocked on your door and see if you were in. Open up the door, Bonnie. Open the door. Open, open, open the door. Don't give a man um, a reverb knob. <laughs> anyway, oh, so dear. why are you down there nice and small? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I would have asked you ages ago, but, yeah, but I didn't want to interrupt. No, fair enough. I was having a bit of a... Yeah, sorry about that. Right, it's, I think it's time for a poem, don't you? Mm. <laughs> yeah, seeing as you've got yourself all set up. So this is uh, another poem from uh, Colonel Craig Ratty that the lovely Julia is going to uh, recite for us. Thank you so much, Julia. <laughs> In lockdown days, the bald explorer wanders by along the path and over the stile. Wait, have I not read this one? No, I did read it. In. I'll start again. Thank you. The bold explorer wanders by, along the path and over the stile, exploring here, exploring there, taking us out from our armchair. No, this is the first one. We did this one on Monday, didn't we? Oh, did we? Have we, have we got the wrong one there? Yeah. Where's uh, the second one? Yeah, the second one is about the rock, isn't it? It's uh, the rock in... Um... And I have seen it on the group. OK. There's, uh, there's a lot of lovely posts here. On the I'm sorry, but ah, here it is. Oh, you got it? Oh, you got it. Uh, I haven't got to go and find it. Marvellous. Sorry about that. No, that's perfectly all right. OK, uh, back to you. This is definitely the right one. The Explorer and the Crag Rat. The bold explorer went to Cornwall in a beautiful dark grey van. He took a gimbal and several cameras wrapped up in a scarf and hat. When he arrived at Rock, the Roche... How do you say it? Roche Rock? Yeah, yeah, that sounds... Sorry, I'd faded myself down then. Uh, yes. <laughs> when he arrived at Roche Rock, the height made him think again. I'll never get up those flim flimsy ladders. It will give me such a fright. He wandered up to the rock, microphone and camera in hand, climbing the ladders to the chapel. The explorer was such a brave man. Was it nerves or just wobbly cam that gave such a stunning effect? Who can tell he was so brave to finally get to the top? He carefully hopped from rock to rock, overcoming his fear of heights. But still he managed to film it all and admire the view from the top. With Mark to guide and keep himself safe, he made it to the chapel. With the vertigo almost overcome, another adventure for us to watch. If you look closely at Roche Rocks, there are some routes to climb. I wonder if we will ever be able to visit with ropes and gear. The explorer and the crag rat climbing one of those easy routes. Corner and staircase, just a diff, conquering his fear of heights. Fantastic. Um, and that was by Colonel Craig Ratty, also known as Peach Telling. And uh, he, that, I think he, he was inspired, was he not, by... Um, the, by your video. By my video, which is... Uh, I'm just bringing it up, actually, with the lovely um, Mark Selwood. And we get up to this top of this blooming thing here, just to quickly uh, show you, climb up this thing. If you haven't seen it, put in um, Vobes, Roche, Rock, and uh, you'll see it. And I climb up this blooming thing, and I am so scared... I don't know if you can hear it. Right. Yep. Yeah, no, fine, good now. I'm not going to turn around because I just hate heights. Anyway, we get we go further up and then we go up another bloody ladder.
this is um the stop flipping bloody chapel. <laughs> here's a here's a slap. Oh god. Oh my God, I'm on my knees. I am, didn't realize how bad I am on heights. I'm at the top with Mark now. You okay, Richard? <laughs> no, I genuinely, I'm, I'm shaking. He is shaking, he is shaking. <laughs> Yep, it was uh, very, very scary. You can go and check out the video if you uh, so uh, wish. Uh, it w <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if... Uh, is uh, Mark out there? <laughs> is he out there? Because that was, that was hilarious. Um, he took me to this rock, and it was, it was only about 30 feet or so, 30 or 40 feet or something like that, with a chapel on the top of this rock uh, in ruins. And um, we climbed up there, but it was a bit wet and slippery. And I had cameras and microphones, and it was just one of those, one of those awkward moments. But anyway, there we are. Um, so that's great. Uh, yeah. But um, Mark was just so relaxed. He was so relaxed. And we have a cat. You're you're muted, by the way. Oh, yeah, I was sorry. <laughs> Say hello, Ellie. Sorry about the noises she was making whilst I was reading. Oh, that's all right. You're a pickle, aren't you? You can hear that uh, dr rain, is it? it's almost like one persistently loud drip, isn't there? Yep, that's probably the, uh, where the gutter's overflowing and dripping downside. Oh, sorry. Lovely. A bit of echo on your... On your uh, the name oh. of the video... Oh, um, the name of the video is... I've just, take, I've just lost it now. Um, sorry about that. If you put in, in YouTube, if you search Vobes Roche Rock, it will come up. And that's R-O-C-H-E for Roche ro Rock or whatever. Um, and if you're in the Facebook group, you can go and see that poem and read it yourself um, without the excess noise and without the uh, rubbish reading. It's, it's really hard to, to read aloud and try and perform like that when you can only hear yourself like half. It's very strange. So I hope I did all right. You did brilliantly. Thank you so much, uh, Julia. That was really lovely. Um, and thank you very much to Pete, uh, to Colonel mm. Craig Ratty, for sending in that poem, or, or even thinking of writing the poem. How lovely is that? No, it was very, uh, very kind. Um, and to be inspired by that rock. I don't know, um, I know he put in a picture, didn't he, with the various routes that you could actually climb up. That's uh, right, yeah. Yeah, we took the, um, the iron ladder, or the steel ladder, and climbed up that way, because that seemed a lot easier than... <laughs> trying to put lines up um so would we would you like to see a little bit of rock climbing julia yes see how yes. seamless this show is because <laughs> colonel craig ratty has um, reminded me that we've got some uh, climbing stuff in the vault and actually he resent over some of the bits now the one i've chosen is actually seven minutes long i'm not going to play all seven minutes long because we're we're rapidly running out of time uh, but I'll play a good three minutes or so, which will give you the flavour of clambering up, um, not there, somewhere even higher. And, and maybe um, Colonel Craig Ratty can just remind us where it is. Um, it's the one that says something like right um, edge, right leader or something. Um, uh, more ladder climbing mime, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Yeah, it's all good fun. Uh, I think go to mime school for nothing, you know. It cost me quite a bit every term. Right, uh, so, OK, in we go. So this is a, a little bit of uh, rock climbing, um, and it's just raw. I think the GoPro is mounted on um, Colonel Craig Ratty's head as he goes up, so it's, it's, it's sort of um, fly-on-the-wall stuff, really. Well, quite literally, <laughs> fly-on-the-wall.
Cooking mm, red. Right. Let it out. That's it. Don't pull it too tight. It's probably harder than I think. This might be as far as I go. It's all a bit polished. I'm slightly nervous here, actually. Blue. Right, watch, mate. Bloody hell. That was a bit of a ah, moment. Just gonna step over here to make myself a bit safe. <laughs> I think I'm slightly off route but I don't really care. I wasn't gonna hang around there. Up keys, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Looking red. Let it out. Yeah. Need to feed it out more. I know I'm not on the true line, but. And I'm going to interrupt well, it to here there. to uh, pause it uh, now. If we get time, we can come back to the, the, the next, uh, the last bit, if we get time. But as you can see, um, that Pete there, or Colonel Craig Ratty, was leading it and putting in the little tools and gizmos so that the bloke behind him can climb up. And uh, that must be the, the trickiest part, because if you go, I mean, obviously you, as as uh, Pete explained last time we were talking, the, those things will hold you. But because of the wide-angle lens on the um, GoPro, every time we went back like that, it felt like he was going much further from the cliff than just the distance of his hands. It was quite strange. Um, but that was brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. It does give you a good feel for the concentration that you have what do you think julia yeah i really enjoyed it but uh it is hair raising is it oh, <laughs> oh yeah i uh, uh, don't think i'd have the confidence to do that to be honest absolutely well um let's see if anybody wants to give us a call on the uh, on the show uh we'll bung in the uh, phone if anyone's desperate to ring in now's your chance oh seven nine three four seven four six seven nine oh hoping that the phone uh, will work. We had uh, some issues uh, over the uh, uh, couple of days ago when everything went funny and I had to re-gig or re-jig rather everything in the studio. Um, but we have more videos and stuff to get through and we have some more art uh, as well. So um, but uh, we can cross off the poem and the climbing. So that was fantastic. Um, I'm not convinced that I want to take up rock climbing. Um, I think it would be great from, from a strength point of view. Uh, it must really tighten up the old muscles, mustn't it, Julia? Yeah, I've had a, a few goes on climbing walls in, indoors. Um, and that, 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 was, that was fun, really fun. But um, I'm not sure I'm, I'd ever be confident enough to do it on the actual rocks and things. So just, oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Benita says, uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby, Bonnie says, um, our hobby used to be climbing volcanoes. Golly, um, you must tell us something about that. That might be something that uh, we could get an in-conversation with going. I'd love to know what it's like climbing a volcano. I mean, presumably these volcanoes are extinct. You, can you drop down on the inside? You hear of people who do go down a certain way on the inside of a, a volcano. Um, yeah, it tightens up some certain muscles. I bet it does, says uh, Colonel Cragretti. My climbing friend slipped down the stratus and broke... Stairs. Oh, stairs, sorry. Satra oh, yes, that's it, stairs and broke two toes. Yeah, it just goes to show, you know, you can, you can climb a mountain, but you can't uh, navigate your own staircase, which is, is, you know, just the irony of it, really. Yeah, I guess it's the uh, just the familiarity of walking up the stairs. You do it every day and you forget yeah. that actually you do need to pay a little bit of attention. <laughs> and and that's it. You know, one slip, that can be that can be you. Could be curtains, couldn't it? Just coming down too quickly on the in the morning, get a bit lightheaded, lose your step, trip on a child's toy, that sort of thing. End up in A&E, broken back, unable to walk. I don't want to scare anybody, but, um, you know, that's where bungalows are quite useful. Um Brilliant. I think we'll have a look at another bit of art, shall we? I think that's a good idea. I think we will. So let's go into our art uh, pool. And um, so uh, now one that I promised from uh, a, a couple of shows ago that I didn't get round is from Lance, who says, uh, Hi, Richard and Eric and Julia. Lance here again. Uh, with the last of my late Uncle John's paintings that my aunt... Auntie Norma kindly sent me, allowing me, with her permission, to share on your show. I also like to add a big thank you to Richard simply for finding the time to add this feature, the Vobes Gallery, to your already hectic show. It's a pleasure and a joy to be able to be involved. Well, um, Lance, it's a pleasure to have the art to share, to be honest with you, and I never suspected for a moment when we got going just how many people have got the, the the art muscle in their fingers or in their, you know, clicking cameras, pictures or modelling things, sculpturing things and, and all of that. So um, there we go. So let's just, we're just going to rattle through these and uh, see what you... Yeah, that's not what I meant to press. I didn't mean to press that button. That's what I meant to press. So this is a, another of these wistful pictures and beautifully framed and Lance, do you know where these are um, set? I mean, that that look doesn't look English, stunning, does it? Isn't it? It's stunning, with and it looks like it must be in May time. Yeah, look at um, the lo lovely the, pink blossom there. You've got the pink blossom, and then you've got a ploughed field, which um, presumably is yet to be um, harvested. Well, you know, it's it's May, so it can't be harvested. It's it's, it's it looks very nice, but that's an unusual church. Yeah, it's, a, yes, it's just a random tower. You can't even see a church attached to it, can you? No, exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's quite good. So up, up next, I just uh, get the next one lined up, make sure I press the, the right button. Here we are. This is very nice by that famous um, artist, Nokia. <laughs> Down there at the bottom. That is lovely, though, isn't it? Is that, oh, is that, that's the French flag, isn't it? French French tall ships. And uh, it's o obviously oil. Um, you can see the uh, the stuff in it. Is um, is Lance is Lance out there? Does he know where it's set? He's not saying anything. Um, but it does. It looks Italy, possibly. Says Robin Jones. Oh, for the um, village. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that absolutely beautiful. Um, I mean, to be able to paint like that, you know. It's wonderful, I mean, isn't it? I mean, the texture of the water and, and the, the, the waves and everything compared to the the, the, the flat but texturedness of the sky. Yes. Oh, I'm so good with words. <laughs> <laughs> but it is lovely, yeah. It's, I mean, I wonder if they are uh, warships. Because um, I can't see any gun holes in there. No, they don't look like warships, do they? Maybe they're um, merchant they're ships. Holes. They're not cutters, are, are they? They're not tea cutters or anything like that because they're um, thin. They look to be quite small ships. Yeah, yeah, there's not enough. Yeah, that's true because there's not enough sail in them. And there's but no big deck at the back or anything. No poop deck. That's it. 
You always need a poop deck, don't you? I wish I had one in my van, to be honest with you. Oh, be, a poop deck's always handy, eh? Always lovely to have a, a good old poop deck. Uh, right, here's the, the next one. Uh, not the best um, photograph, but um, it does show exactly what it is. A bit darker, this one. Um, but again... Apparently... Sorry, Lance yep. says it is Spain. The first first painting was Spain. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Um, so I, I don't know where this is, but again, it's got... The, you can see that little hut there in the middle of nowhere. Shepherd's hut, isn't it? Lovely. Shepherd's hut. But presumably there are pan tiles on its roof, those sort of Spanish pan tiles, those curved tiles that they have, I guess, if it's Spain with um, the hills of um, Alicante behind. I may, may have made that up, but... Uh, <laughs> that, is, uh, that is rather good. Uh, do do love that. And uh, I think finally, we have another one which must be somewhere in. Uh, well, this looks very British. This one, but it might not be. With I'm just pulled to the little tree on the left that looks is like it's got a tree house in it. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Huh. And, and then a woman who, or I think it's a woman and a child. Um, she looks like she's got a beehive thing on her, but it's maybe just like a um, she's Quaker a wide hat. hat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and the, and and a bloke leading his uh, geese across that. Is, presumably, that's a bridge, is it, or is it a water mill? An overgrown. I, I thought it was a water mill, but I'm not sure. Yeah, fascinating. Um, but uh, wonderful to be able to paint like that. I wish I could. And geese, yeah. Is that a lock? Oh, is it a lock? Could be a lock. I don't know. I think I think we could see the uh, the sloping curved um, bit of roof in the trees there, can't we? Yeah, that's what I can see there, and I think that the water is on a wheel because it's it seems to be coming down, but difficult to tell. Uh, but anyway, um, fascinating scene. And I wish I could paint like that. Well, I oh. wish I could paint full stop. Actually. Oops, sorry. Oh, hang on. Where are we? Oh. Went all dark for a moment. I know. I know. I pressed the wrong silly button. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for those. Uh, how lovely is that? That's absolutely delightful um, to see all of that. Uh, is that beehive just what she want? What is that beehive just what she always wanted? I've no idea. Uh, that one went over my I head. I'm afraid. Yeah, Dave oh. is usually quick with and clever with his uh, quips, but I'm afraid that one went over. My I can't read. Really I has the dumb. Yeah, um, we've got one more uh, bit of art to have a look at shortly, but um, this links very well with the the pictures um, and the art to our next video, which is about sculpting. Um, have you heard of the sculptor Ronald Ray? No, I don't well, believe it. It's not Ronald Ray Gun. Um, his sort of shortened name, uh, who came over and did some art, because he was a uh, president of the United States, wasn't he, Ronald Reagan? Yeah, I, know, I know that name. Um, <laughs> Ronald. Apparently, yeah, go on. Apparently, that was a song lyric that we that you read out when we could work oh, out. Oh, I see. I beg your pardon. There we are. That's why it went over my head. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, didn't know that one. I don't. Uh, not very good at song song lyrics, as you know. Um, okay, so Edward uh, Moulding has been out. Uh, and about, and he has going to, he's going to uh, Campbell Park. I'm not quite sure where Campbell Park is, Edward. Um, maybe you could just enlighten us where it is. But uh, he's gone to have a look at the sculptures in the park by this chap, Ronald Ray. So let us uh, go in there and have a, a quick gander. Uh, so where are you on my desk, uh, Edward? There you are. Here we go. Hey, good morning, I'm Ted Moulding and I'm in my local park, Campbell Park, in Milton Keynes. Today I'm going to take a little walk and look at some sculptures that are in the park. These two sculptures are by Raymond Ray. So, let us go, we'll take a little walk. This is the first piece by Roland Ray and it's based on his grandfather's experiences hit the Battle of the Somme. It is uh, on loan from the Leeds Royal Armoury and is dedicated to the Prince of the Wa Princess of Wales, Diana. 
we just go in a bit further, a bit closer, and we will see that the man has lost his leg to a landmine. This is our second piece of sculpture by Roland Ray and it's called Animals at War. There we go. Um, I, yeah, sorry, my, my whole joke was uh, completely uh, misconstrued because I said it was, what did I say it was? Ronald, it's Roland. Can't read my own writing. <laughs> typically, I've got. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, since the advent of um, computers and things, my writing now, my handwriting, is reverted to Doctor Script, um, i.e., a scrawl that I have no idea what it says. So it was Roland Ray and not Roland Rat. Um, I still haven't heard of that name anyway. No, I hadn't, but uh, I've forgotten. It's, it's in Milton Keynes, and I think we talked about this before, and it all comes flooding back to me that, uh, yes, it was not just concrete cows, but also the art. So, uh, sorry, um, Edward, if... Uh, is Edward out there? Um, sorry if I um, cock that up, because I completely forgot that it was in uh, Milton Keynes. Very easy thing to do, but uh, appreciate that very much indeed. Um, ha how are the comments going, lovely Julia? Um, Edward Moulding says Campbell Park is at the east end of Milton Keynes city centre. Ah, right. OK, brilliant stuff. Um, thank you for that. And Andrew Norris says there are not enough memorials to animals, and I heartily agree. Yes, that's right. We have in Worthing a memorial um, to, it's not much of a, it's not a sculpture as such, but it's a memorial to the pigeons who, who fought in the war. Yeah, yeah. I was going to uh, say, we do with more of them to remind us of all these pigeons that get in our way, that actually, you know, if it weren't for them, we might not have won the war. Exactly. I mean, I, I am aware that um, I have a memorial to all the pigeons who've accidentally fallen down my chimney and got uh, slightly burnt by the Essie. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and uh, so that's interesting. Um, I think we'll do our next bit of art, shall we? And then we'll uh, crack on with our, um, our videos. How are we doing? We're doing all right, actually, on the time. We're doing all right. 21 minutes. Oh, fantastic. Uh, what are you doing with... Hand grenades, says Michael White to Bonnie. Uh, yeah, Yankee Doodle Pigeon. Catch the pigeon. Catch the pigeon. Oh. No, it's because she says a hand grenade was blown up in our local cops yesterday. Very loud. Oh. You wouldn't expect what? it to be blown up very quietly. Well, no. <laughs> Just saying. But why was it even blowing up at all? Yeah, what What are the... Uh, they're not allowed to snowball fights, these kids, because, you know, you might catch COVID from it. So uh, it's all right to throw grenades at one another. Is it, it's like kids found an old army gump, d gump? Dump somewhere. Is that, what, no. is that what's happened? But it was found in the mud, she says. So. Found... What, a grenade? Just like that, found in the mud? So. Yeah. Not dug up. I guess the mud was so... That whatever was under there, it's just been lying there, what, since um, the days of the... Canadians over in the World War? I guess so. Must be, because yeah. um, where is it? Because Bonnie is, I think she's over Patcham Way, isn't she? Because in tomorrow's video, I attempt to follow her walk. It's like Challenge Annika, only it's Challenge Voby. <laughs> and um, I, I have to say, I didn't quite manage to get to the end of her walk because I, I had some issues uh, that I had to solve but I don't want to give the game away too much. Bit of a lame ending, I'm afraid. People are going to hate me for it, but um, the rest of the walk is all right. I don't think anyone's going to hate hate you as much as you're hating yourself because you feel bad about it, so don't. I will we'll still, we'll still lap it up, won't we, guys? Yes. And gals. Good. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so I think that's where she is, and if that is where she is, then and she's on the monarch's way, we're sort of almost pinpointed pretty much now close to where she must live. Um, the Canadians were over there, weren't they, during the Second World War? So it might be a Canadian grenade. How are, you, how are your new boots? They are lovely. I'm just waiting. Um, I may get try and see if um, the Morris Blodge has got them um, across the way there. 
but I'm also waiting for a delivery. I, I should have gone to um, a local ironmonger's and got some of that dubbing stuff or um, kernel wax, whatever it's called, turtle wax or whatever it is you sho sho shove on boots. But I am going to do it. I'm going to make sure that my boots are nice and clean, just as I am tomorrow morning. One of the tasks I have is to clean the van. And I do that each week, um, most weeks. Uh, some weeks I haven't used the van very much, so it's not dirty. But uh, tomorrow... I was about to say, have you needed to for the last few? To, uh, you have, to but, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how you just drive down the road and black seems to get every blooming colour of dirt on there. Imagine, it just shows it up on a new van, on a nice, clean, gleaming van. It doesn't stay new for long. And, of course, now I've got my um, Go Faster trims, or hubcaps, as we used to call them, um, they, you know, they're going to be a bit more awkward to clean because I don't have a hose. I have to do this by toothbrush. <laughs> That's a fact and totem pole, that is. I can imagine you doing that, though. Yeah. Um... So that's it. Have you broken them in yet? No, they're not broken at all. They're still OK. And um, they're in the uh, they're in the front room, actually, uh, in my office, um, warming up by the fire. No, they're not. They're not because you're not supposed to let you're not supposed to heat them up too quickly. Are you boots leather? Because it'll no, crack. It'll crack. Yes. Uh, so that's all good. Stephen Agger. Hello to you. Nice to see you. Mickey Baines says I even saw smoke rising, Julia. Oh, from what? My brain from. <laughs> <laughs> from where, yeah. Oh, from, uh, or from the... Um, who said that, anyway? Uh, that was Mickey Baines said that. Uh, Nigel Sadler says, pop into bunces. Yes, well, I would. That would be my default thing. Only, yeah, you can't anymore, as you saw in my video. I revealed to the world that bunces has vanished in a puff of smoke. <laughs> About uh, ten years ago or something, apparently. About two, two, two years ago. Oh, right. Yeah, not ten years ago. Cool. No, more recently then. Um, Linda Kane says, uh, certainly is. Also, the memorial is at the National Arb... What is she talking about? It's when people talk to each other. That I can't always work that bit out. But never mind. Um, that's not a criticism. It's not a criticism. She's getting a bit nervous now in case people take offence too quickly. Uh, we're going to have a look at another piece, piece of art. And this piece of art comes... Or these pieces, I should say, comes from Woody Jenny. Um, oh. Now, I've got, to, I've got to get this in the right order because um, she's given me a little explanation to read out first. So let me read that out. And she says, uh, Hello, all folks. These little packages of everyday dried foods, thin slices or cubes, my radiator is often home to this process, sometimes wrapped in kitchen roll, if saturated with water, to name a few, such as cucumber, courgette, used tea bags, ch chilies, I think, leeks, banana skins, and I try all sorts of veggies, fruit. It's always a delight to me what these pieces, when they are dried, become. If you try, you'll have some fun. Slice, dice, peel, and much more. So I think from what that is, that um, she's taken these various bits of um, vegetables and things and dried them on the radiator. And and then come up with um, little interesting objets d'art, as they say, objects of art, love, <laughs> objects of art. So that's um, intriguing. Let's have yeah, a look. So, so yeah, hang on, I've got to go and get to to the next bit where we, because my email system is all over the place. So um, hang on, that's not that's not what she's talking about. Here, okay, here we go. Uh, pictures. So. These are, apparently, I think these are the ones. Tell me if I'm wrong, Woody Jelly. Uh, jelly. <laughs> jelly. <laughs> oh, dear. Me and my gob. Um, these look like things found on the sea, though, this one. Oh, yes, there's um, some shells there. Yeah. Um, what well, looks like dried bits of um, branch. <clears throat> but nicely, I like the um, little sort of, um, it looks like, seaweed being used as a bow mm. which is very clever quite mm. like that that's that's very good uh let me um then this one isn't what what i just read out this is um well it's a mask by the looks looks like a respirator mask it's like the face of a flea a fly oh yeah um with um just interesting things all around 
Uh, we huh? need you to call in, really. And um, this is, I, I remember somebody, you know, when, what, what was his name? Who did the, the art? It's so nice when you hear the, um, some art, just need, you need like a little bit of um, an explanation on, uh, not so much what it is, but the process. Um, I'm just trying mm. to remember the guy's name that we did the other day, who, um, you know, with those what? amazing doodles that he did with like the where's wally type stuff that we did on the show a while back oh um yeah oh, see uh, i know when it comes, <laughs> when it comes to the dragons remember, and tattoos, yeah that's it? that's the yeah sorry if i i is can't it, uh always Darren? Re- no yeah, oh I'd brain to, yeah brain, it, well, brain right uh, there brain, is a, there's Darren. another another picture here i just got to find it uh more to choose from here we go I'm not sure whether this is the another close up of um this is just another view I think of the same that, that we saw before. So uh, I don't know Woody Jamie I I haven't seen the one with the cucumbers and bits and bobs. I don't know whether you sent that, those in. That that is it actually isn't it? Oh is it? it? I think so because I think I recognize something dried and cucumbery. Ah um, right okay. Woody Jenny says the bow is chilly. I did that at the very beginning last year. The bow is chilly. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, I see. Ah. How yeah. interesting. Well, there you are, you see. It's amazing what you can do with all sorts of everyday objects and turn them into art. Mm. Um, and, and then they just take on a completely different um, different aspect. Thank you so much for sending those in. I hope I've you know got it right and did it justice. Sometimes... I'm not. Th- th- one of the reasons for doing these sort of things is because I know nothing about art. I'm a bit of a um, philistine, so it's mm. it's great to see these things and um, then try and understand and appreciate. You know, because I I'll look, the, the sort of art that I like is these things like Constable, um, because I can look at it and I know it's uh, the Hay Wayne, and it looks like what it is. When mm. you get sort of expressionist stuff, I struggle with that really. But other people don't, which is great. And so it's a learning process. Mm. Thank you for sending that in, Woody Jenny. Like that. Yeah, very much. Thank you so much. Uh, right. OK, I think we will um, move on. Um, what the hell have we got next? Hang on a minute. <laughs> Just to, Oh, yes. Do you remember there was a certain member of the crowd who went for a walk and slipped, fell in the water? <sighs> yes, I may remember that. Yeah. Roy Edwards. Um, yeah. He had a bit of a mishap. Well, he's he's uh, sent in a follow-on video. Want to watch it? Yes, thanks. Hi, Richard. Hi, Julia. Thanks for um, yes. putting my video on the uh, show on Wednesday. I appreciate that. I've got a few more new subscribers. I like your show. Um, Daz inspired me a bit to get out uh, and do some walks, which I really enjoy. And I did certainly go for one there. So, once again, I uh, appreciate um, you putting me on the show, and uh, I might send some more clips in another day. Once again, thanks a lot. Man of special effects. <laughs> Not only can he fall in water, but he can make himself reappear next to himself. Uh, Roy, thank you so much uh, for for that. It was a pleasure to do it. Uh, obviously, with the two of you talking one over the other, it was a bit difficult to hear what uh, the other message was. But how clever. How clever is that? Um, fantastic. Uh, but, yeah, that brought back very happy memories of Wednesday's <laughs> show in okay. which we... Uh, yeah, we did uh, play that in many times. Um, cobblers, cobblers. <laughs> fantastic. But yeah, oh. that's very that's very clever. Uh, well done, you. Uh, all good, all good stuff. So there we go. Um, now we've got uh, got a couple more. Um, and uh, do you like hedgehogs, Julia? I do like hedgehogs. Don't see many these days, do you? No, sadly not. They're getting rarer and rarer. Well, it's handy because we can bring you some hedgehogs on the Vogue show because we're like that. We're very clever. We have the technology. Well, I say we. David Sedgwick has the technology, to be honest with you. And I bet it, he has his hedgehogs too, right? He has a hedgehog cam. Ooh. So this is a little sequence from his hedgehog cam in his garden. 
um, and he 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 captured some hedgehogs. But um, they can be argumentative little buggers, apparently. <laughs> Let's have a look. So where did I put you, David? Where is your hedgehogs? Here they are. So there we go. How about that? Some hedgehogs there. Um, Linda says uh, they're not always fighting when they do that. Um, yeah. It's interesting how they hang around the same area. That's what struck me is they don't sort of like, you know, go miles and miles. They just seem to be hovering in that little area. Probably sticking where they know their food is. Yes, maybe. I suppose that's, yeah, that's that's true. I hadn't thought of it like that. Um, so, that was lovely to see. They look so healthy and, and quite, you know, mature and, and it's good. And I noticed the time at the beginning, it said it was 10.30 p.m. So in January last year, or, yeah, last year, before lockdown, obviously they couldn't come out during lockdown, um, which is why you don't see so many of them at the moment. But, um, it, uh, you know, 10.30, I suppose most people are sort of going to bed and so it's quiet in the gardens and they think, yeah, OK, we've been waiting since about five because it gets... You know, it gets about dark, doesn't it, by five o'clock in January. Mm. Um, it's getting dark about four-ish. It's only just lightening up now. So they've been waiting for about five hours, and then all of a sudden, right, OK, come on, mate, out we go. Where's this sodding food? <laughs> I suppose I suppose if, if um, David is feeding them, bunging a bit of food down for them, then they know to come out where to come. Is that Are they creatures of habit? I don't know anything I about hedgehogs. I think I think I think yeah I think they are a little bit of creatures of habit um but it's it's nice if um if you want hedgehogs in your garden and you you know you want a chance of them coming in rather you put a little hedgehog hole in the bottom of your fencing um both sides they can travel through and um you're more likely to to see them that way apparently and don't feed them um bread and milk as way back when I was a kid um uh, my mum thought that's what we was you know, should do, but then we learnt that actually just give them some cat food because um, that's well more appropriate to them. But uh, yeah, people say they like. Oh, hello! What happened to your sound? Oh gosh, have I been talking to? No, no, no! It just it just this second clicked off. That's strange. I must have accidentally tapped the mouse. Ah, uh, yeah. So you were saying people often think. Yeah, people often think that. Um, what was I saying? You, you said don't give them <laughs> oh, milk, they, give them cat food, but most people people often think... I think um, <clears throat> I've heard people say that they like eating slugs. Well, I, know, I haven't seen any sign of a uh, hedgehog in my garden for about two years. There was one when I moved in. Not What, a slug? Here, no, a hedgehog. A hedgehog. But, um, but no, now that I haven't seen one for ages, there's just loads of slugs. So I think that might be true. That they do like to eat them. They do seem to like dried cat food, um, says Edward. Um, so that's interesting. We have squirrels nesting in the garden. And somebody said, uh, who was it? Oh, Colonel Cragratty, I think, said he found one that had fallen asleep under a tree and then stayed there all winter. I can't believe that he managed that, that, that no other predator or something 
didn't um, attack him or try to eat him or something. I mean, I know they've got their little spines and stuff. Um, maybe maybe he was just safe there from you know, maybe it was close enough to the house. I don't know. But um, hedgehogs hibernate. A mammals, hedgehog is a mammal, isn't it? Yes. Um, a dormouse hibernates, mm -hmm. and the sixteen species of bats hibernate, mm -hmm. and that's it in mammals. I know reptiles and insects do, but they're the only mammals that hibernate, apparently. So um, I read. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know enough about it, really. I know and I say I love animals, but... The other animals, like squirrels and things... Um, I think they do sleep more during the winter. Um, well, they, apparently... Well, this was a BBC book on a big block. I've got it in the other room, and it just said those three mammals are the only three that hibernate. Badgers and foxes and squirrels are out... Um, pretty much all the time because food is so scarce so they're constantly looking, is what it said. I don't know how true any of that is. but this, I mean, you know, you, it was a BBC, so presumably it's lying to us because they're very biased. Anyway, um, thank you very much, David, for sending in the hedgehogs. That was fantastic. How lovely yeah. is that? It was great to see them. Uh, much enjoyed that. Really enjoyed that. Um, OK, so... Um, we have one more video, so let's go to our video because we're fast coming to the end of the show. And sorry, Mike, I didn't mean to leave you to the end, uh, but Mike has been uh, looking at his Clearview stove, uh, which is very similar but not quite the same as the model I have. There is a subtle difference, I noticed, in his video today. I thought it was a, an identical version, but it is actually slightly different. Um, so, uh, And his is a lot cleaner than mine, of course. Uh, I think he's only had it... Um, uh, sort of six months to a year if I've got that right but anyway let's go to Mike Stevens's place um, and have a look at his wonderful wood burning stove hello this is Mike again with another installment from the wood burning stove um, as I mentioned in the previous video this is a clear view stove model is the solution 400 it has a storage area down here to put logs, but the installer recommended I don't directly store logs down there for risk of fire. It has a, I call it a griddle, or a little riddle, and that just pulls out the turn mat to pop the ashes in there. Now the ashes can be used on the garden, which I do, to uh, fertilise the plants. Very, very useful there. Now you've got the door. It's all made of steel uh, with the lining round here, uh, like a rope lining to keep the insulation in, a brass handle, double glazed door. To clean that I use this, it's called um, Dirt Busters, a professional stove glass cleaner. I think I can just use washing up liquid and, uh, and so on, but I like this, it's very easy. Just make sure you don't get it anywhere near your eyes, but uh, I use a special pad, a abrasive pad to clean it on. In case you're wondering, abrasive on glass? Well, yes, that does seem to work. And you can use just ordinary wood ash on there as well, and I've heard newspaper is good for it too. You've got the thermometer there, as I mentioned in the previous video. As you might be able to see, the fans are pointing that way and that way. <clears throat> that's to disperse the heat around the room. As I mentioned, there's no batteries in this fan at all. It's just a simple uh, sensor to pick up the heat from the stove. And it's completely silent, which is very useful if you're watching the Vogue show or any other entertainment. It simply turns around when the heat gets to about, in this case, about 120, 130, 140, something like that. It just turns around and simply disperses the heat around the room. I was recommended to keep it right at the back, and it was my idea to sort of point it in those directions to disperse the heat. So that is the latest instalment from the Clearview uh, Solution 400. Very, very pleased with it. It doesn't need a air ventilation, but you can normally keep a window slightly, a slightly ajar to get a bit of air in. Um, higher kilowatts power stove, you need an air brick as ventilation, but uh, 
it's really really good i'm really happy with it and it can heat the whole house i do have radiators as well to dry to close on in another room as richard does in his kitchen uh, so i'm very very happy with it so signing off for now bye bye thank you very much mike there we are that's the uh, from the from the clear view production unit there um and it's interesting to, i mean that was a bizarre thing I have to say that they say store your logs in there. I thought you can barely get a log under there. Um, I certainly wouldn't put my uh, a log under there. Um, I do bring my logs in to the house and try and leave them in there for a good week or two before I burn them. Although sometimes I get get through them too quickly. Um, and uh, what was the other thing I was going to say um, about it? Look, I mean it was very nice and clean, but there was another little observation. Oh, Brillo pad. Somebody said to me on the SE jobby. Um, why don't you use a Brillo pad to get them clean? And actually, I thought, well, that's a, f a funny idea. But actually, I've tried it. Brillo pads work brilliantly. <laughs> Brillo pads work ha brilliantly. Brillo. Yes. Um, so uh, they work really well. So I, ha I no longer have to put any weird chemicals. I just buy them. And there's a cheap, you know, big packet of Brillo pads. And those Brillo pads will last like one or two weeks just to give it. And I use that on the SE. Um, so that's it. Oh, kindling. Yeah, kindling would go underneath. That makes sense. I was going to say you wouldn't put logs underneath the kindling. Um, so that's, yeah, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, how lovely. If anyone's got, um, I'd love to know uh, what was the other question. Yeah, I mean, it, presumably it warms up the house. Because, um, uh, I mean, I've, I've got one of those fans. I haven't got two of them. But, but boy, you know, it soon gets hot with the door shut. Um, it soon builds up the temperature in there, and I have to get mine really low. It's, in fact, I find my clear view little fire similar to that, but not quite the same because I haven't got that little base story thing. Um, more effective than the SE. The SE takes a long time, but once it's going, it then just sits there like a big old pig <laughs> radiating away. And Good thing. It might be just because it's bigger, isn't it? It's got more more material to warm up. Yeah, definitely. Um, it just takes longer. There's more to more of the steel to heat up, and it convects the heat in an unusual way around the SE so that it heats the oven. Um, but I love both, and I love the SE. I mean, it is a it it, it is it's sort of hungry. Baby. It is my baby. It is hungry. It it you just wood hungry and. Um, until you've got it go, until you've got that sort of build up of ash, and then you can just shove a log in there, and it will just, you know, especially if you're not cooking on it, and it will just, just maintain the temperature. But I haven't really yet organised it sufficiently to get me through the winter. I'm waiting, waiting for the kids to go, and then things will be changed. So uh, yeah, so there we go. How about that? That was lovely. Thanks, Michael. Michael, Mike. Mike. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Mother any calls, Michael. It makes the home nice and warm, he says. Quite right, too. Clearview Rental and Relay was a TV rental firm once. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, Clearview for clear view of the telly, I suppose. Um, store hedgehogs under these, says Dave of your. Yep, let them have a good snooze under there, which is quite good. Um, and I think yours is Vision 500, says Audrey Forbes. Thank you very much. Um, I can't remember. I mean, I bought it at the same time as the SE. Does it glow in the dark? <laughs> I tell you what, I, when our first... Uh, sorry, we were supposed to end the show, but our first... Um, when we moved in here to the, to the house, Victorian Terrace, and it had this awful 1970s uh, gas fire in this awful 1970s homemade brick surround that looked like bricks from Wicks or somewhere, modern bricks, so that it just looked really tacky and naff. And I looked at that and said, that's got to go, because it also protruded into the... It looked like someone had done a bit of home um, brickying. You know, they thought they were a Churchill. Uh, Never before in the history of human endeavour has so many bricks been turned into a 1970s. We will fight them on the beaches. We will build them in the front rooms. We will throw them in the bin, and we will get rid of them and send smoke up the chimney. Sorry, carried away. Um, and um, that was Arthur Mallard, if anyone was guessing. <laughs> Arthur Mallard, do you remember Arthur Mallard? All right. Yeah, that would be all right. 
<laughs> he what did he? <laughs> Arthur Mallard. Um, anyway, uh, he was a fighter, wasn't he, Arthur Mallard? That's why I had the squish. Anyway, what was I saying? Something about the. Oh yes, does it glow in the dark? Yes. We got this um, pot. We we ripped all that out. Opened up the fireplace. First thing we had was this pot. This very cheap moulded pot belly fire, and we used to fill it up with coal, and that and it got so hot if until we realised how much or how little coal we needed, and it would glow bright orange. It didn't need to be dark. It just and I kept thinking it's going to melt. It's going to melt. <laughs> It didn't. Sorry. It didn't. It didn't. It wouldn't be hot enough. But it was. It, it would just glow like that. And you thought, yes, you could take a piece of paper like this and put it against it and it would combust. It was that um, it was that hot. But we didn't fill it, you know, once we knew not to fill it with coal. Um, so there I remember when gas, gas, gas fires were all very cool, cool. Uh, so there we are, Colonel Kroenraki is off. We're going to be off. Uh, thank you, Julia, for coming in and doing the Friday show. It's been good fun. Thank you for having me along. It's a pleasure. Thank you for uh, all the contributions to everybody, uh, all the uh, thinging and t typing out there. Paul Rampton says it's interesting to know how those fans work. Those fans are great because they cost nothing. It's just the heat, uh, a convection thing. Um, and thanks to uh, Judith out there and um, moderating and making sure it's, it's very kind thanks to all our wonderful contributors uh nikki bernie roy edward pete uh david mike to our art contributors robin jenny and lance and to the poem to uh, colonel craig ratty sorry nobody uh, called in but we've had a very full uh, thing hope you have a fantastic weekend everybody enjoy yourselves take care there is a new video for you tomorrow a bit muddy uh with new boots um and uh they'll and that's about it really so uh, thank you julia thank you richard for putting it all together and again thank you to all the contributors well that's uh that's what we do isn't it and we will see you all on monday for another fun week of fun thrills and spills take care uh, look after yourselves thanks so much for watching and uh we will now disembark have a great weekend, everybody. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.